In this interview, we are going to give you five CIS marriage fraud interview tips for 2017 that you haven't seen on any other listicles. If that sounds good, stick around. I'm Trent Williams, this is Damien DeNoble, and this is Bull City Lawyer TV. Our channel is all about giving immigrants reliable information that they can use to make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes when going through the immigration application process with CIS, the Department of State, or consulates abroad. If you like that, then subscribe because we're trying to make a lot of videos. Lawyers usually give up on this YouTube thing. We're trying to be not one of the casualties. Let's get right into it. We're going to give you five CIS marriage fraud interview tips for 2017. We've actually looked at responses from lawyers that have been in marriage fraud interviews since President Trump has taken office, and we want to give you some tips that we've learned from those conversations. I'm going to start with number one. You want to avoid a situation where as you're walking into an interview with your partner or with your lawyer or with an advocate or with an interpreter, where you have the sudden urge to come clean or just tell somebody something that you didn't want to tell them in the preparation leading up to the interview. This happens more than you think. For the beneficiary, it's usually something along the lines of, whoops, I was married before and I didn't tell you because I was afraid that you would think X, Y, Z. Or whoops, I actually had a fake passport. Or whoops, I had X number of undocumented entries that I didn't disclose. For the petitioner, it's usually something along the lines of, actually, I don't love my spouse anymore. And you want to avoid doing this right before the interview. Again, we are in the USCIS field office, you're walking into the interview and you go, oh, I got to come clean and you pull your partner aside or your attorney. What you need to be doing instead is in the preparatory time leading up to the filing of your form, you need to be disclosing everything. If you can't be honest with your partner or with your lawyer about your past, then chances are you are not ready to do the uh, adjustment of status interview, the marriage front interview anyway. Tip number two, always make eye contact with your interviewer and never interrupt him or her. What? Never interrupt. What? Never interrupt. But I had a, I had a... So we all go through this in life. You're in a, you know, a conversation, you interrupt the person. A lot of times it's not significant. For us as attorneys, <coughs> we're never allowed to interrupt the judge. If we interrupt the judge, odds are our case won't go the way we want it to. Judge. The same goes for you. If you are constantly interrupting your interviewer. But do, can they? They're not going to be too happy with but you. But are you happy with me now? No. But I love my spouse. No. But she's great. Not happy at all. But I entered every, everything fine. I entered legally. And as of, and right now I'm checking denied. Fair. So don't, don't do that. Don't interrupt your adjudicating officer. Don't interrupt them ever. If you do interrupt them, maybe quickly apologize. I'm sorry. But I didn't just mean don't to do it again. That was okay. That was okay. Quick apology. Move on. Don't make a big deal out of it. My bad. But move on. Don't apologize multiple times. I'm sorry? Exactly. And like I said, make eye contact. That's my tip number two. Tip number three, and this is something you might not think about. A lot of people have pain medication. A lot of people have allergy medication. A lot of people have medication that helps them be more comfortable in their day-to-day -day lives. Problem is, some of those medications can make you drowsy, can make you feel out of it, right? You don't want to feel out of it during your interview, so consider before going in, the morning of or the afternoon of, lowering your dose of whatever pain medication you have to take, or at least making sure that you're not doing anything that you know complicates the side effects of your medication, like maybe drinking alcohol with a pain pill or drinking alcohol with an allergy pill. There have been situations, and this one attorney online was talking about this, where their client went into a marriage fraud interview, and on their first interview, he actually, he and his spouse actually had an RFE request, a request for more evidence, because he couldn't remember the day they got married, he couldn't remember the color of the toothbrush that she had, he couldn't remember the address, and he didn't know why he couldn't remember, and then he realized he'd taken his pain medication, and that had clouded his judgment, no big deal, the lawyer was able to go back, have this person write an affidavit, explain what happened, but it's more of a headache than you want to deal with. So if you have a headache, take a lower dose, 
or simply don't do anything to complicate the side effects is tip number three. Well, sorry to interrupt, but <laughs> on that note, if you're like us, maybe you have a little, you have trouble getting started in the morning, you wanna drink a little caffeine, maybe some coffee, don't overdo it. Whatever you're doing, stay the course. If you're a little drowsy and you think, hey, maybe I need four cups this morning instead of one, you're wrong. You don't wanna go into that interview all jacked up and jittery. Just do what you normally do. Yeah, because sometimes the only thing worse than a drowsy candidate is somebody who's overly anxious, and that, too, will make you forget answers that you should know. That's gonna lead into our fourth tip. Our fourth tip is don't be overpassionate. What do I mean by that? Don't argue with your interviewer. Don't try to prove your love by demonstrating that whatever they're saying is so unbelievable because you're so in love and they're crazy if they think you're not. You know, a lot of people are trying to beat the system. There's a lot of fraud out there. And we're not saying you're committing any fraud, but these officers are just doing their job. Treat them with respect and they will respect you, hopefully. So remain calm. Don't argue with the person interviewing you. Just be honest, express your love. If they don't believe it, it's not, it's not something you can argue your way into. That's I adore you. That's only going to make the officer a little more annoyed. Kind of seeing a theme with my tips. I love you. <laughs> yeah, maybe say that to your spouse. Maybe not the interviewer. Could get a little weird. It's maybe not the message you want to send. I'd like to hug you tightly. <laughs> I, I definitely think that's the wrong message. Um, Fair. The last part of my tip, I'm kind of rolling a lot of tips into one. The last part of my tip is just go in with a positive attitude. Don't be pessimistic. Go in optimistic. If you're optimistic, you have a positive attitude. Hopefully that will rub off on the officer. Maybe that'll be, put them in a little better mood and it'll help you out in the long run. Unfortunately, sometimes optimism is not going to get you through everything and probably the biggest trend that we're seeing in 2017, and this goes to tip number five, is that interviews are getting tougher. Things that in prior years, in prior presidential administrations used to be like go, like working without a license, working while on a status that you're not supposed to be working on, other minor infractions are now being scrutinized by officers. Um, more worryingly, some candidates that are also concurrently filing for asylum are also being quizzed by officers on their actual asylum claims. So there's a couple of things to digest from in this tip. So one thing to pull out of this is that if you have any red flags in your application, even minor ones, it's a good idea and it'd be irresponsible of me to tell you otherwise to get a lawyer or an advocate that will be there with you in the room. So this can be a lawyer, this can be a BIA rep, and they really need to advocate for your rights. If you can't do that, some people can't no matter how much they want to, you need to be your own advocate. And so if you do have red flags, you really need to understand why they might hurt you. So even if you can't hire a lawyer, consider at least finding a nonprofit, a legal nonprofit, or somebody like a BIA rep that can at least go over those red flags with you even if you can't afford to have them be in the interview with you. If there is a case where an adjudicating officer starts asking you about a parallel application, you should know that USCIS officers only have jurisdiction over the adjustment of status application that's in front of them. And so you should feel free to be, to say that, okay? And then finally, again, this is within this whole tip number five that these interviews have been getting harder in 2017. Um, Officers are asking candidates to sign sworn statements to clear up issues that might be presented in the interview. Wherever possible, you should refuse to sign these unless you know exactly what their purpose is. If an officer says, well, this is just for accuracy purposes, you wanna be really, really careful with that and explore further what that might mean. All of this adds up to the fact that you need an advocate more likely than not in that interview with you. I still have had slam dunk applications in 2017, but if you're a slam dunk application, you tend to know it. And if you're not, you tend to know it as well. So know thyself and find an advocate if you need one. So those are our five tips. If you like what you saw, think about subscribing to our channel. We're gonna have more content of this nature. If you have any questions or concerns, comment below, shoot us an email, Go to our website, 
Twitter us. Whatever if, you want. Whatever you want. Did I interrupt again? A little that bit. That was like the third or fourth time. Yeah. I would totally fail the interview. Don't do that. If you do need an I-130 law firm, we are happy to assist with the theme of this show. If you are in a state where we can't attend an interview, we probably are going to decline, but we still are happy to talk to you about your case. Once again, this is Bull City Lawyer Television. If you like what you see, please subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything, and you can't possibly fail this part of the marriage fraud interview called the subscribe to our channel part. But on.